شمس روحي وحي ربي جنتي وحياة قلبي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all his companions, his household. May Allah bless them all and bless every one of us. And I'm sure every single one of us has so much of goodness within us. And I'm sure each one of us feels that inshallah we can do much more. I want to start off by mentioning something interesting that I thought about while Hafiz Imran was speaking. I was on a flight that was coming in from Monrovia to Freetown a few weeks ago and we were flying from Freetown to Accra and there happened to be a brother seated next to me and we got chatting, Muslim brother from Liberia. Salam alaikum, Sheikh, how are you? So nice to see you, etc. And we were speaking and I told him, you know, people get excited when they see me, when they... Uh, hear about me, they sometimes go beyond the limit and my father, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him good health and a uh, long life to keep on doing the good he is doing. He always reminds me, you know what? You are just a number. That's it. Don't ever think that you're better than the people you're speaking to. And don't ever think that you're higher than anyone else. Because if that's the case, you will never be able to reach their hearts. Speak as though they are better than you. And you just need to get a message to them. So I was telling this brother that I want to learn something from you. Tell me, tell me something that I can take to people. And he looked at me and he said something amazing. He said, look, I'm a businessman. Mashallah, I'm here, seated on this flight. I fly every week. And he says, every time I think about how I started, how we were when we were young. And I want you to pause for a moment and every one of you think about yourselves or your fathers or grandfathers, where they started. There must have been a time when they could not afford shoes. I'm sure you all know that, right? There was a time perhaps when they could not afford school fees, okay? But they were much more content than us. And we today are sitting here, such a beautiful function, subhanallah, and still we have more complaints than all of them put together. We complain more than what we used to when we did not have. Because that's how materialism works. When you run behind the dunya, guess what? It always runs faster than you. Subhanallah. You can never catch up. You have the latest phone today. The saddest news tomorrow morning. There's one later than that. You're depressed again. May Allah forgive us. So this brother was telling me, I recall the day. When we struggled, we suffered. Then I entered into business and subhanallah, I did well. And suddenly, boom, everything went because of something that happened. Now, sometimes the brother didn't explain to me, but some people, they have their factories burnt. That's the plan of Allah. I told him, how did you cope with this? He says, it took me not long. It did not take me long to figure out that I can never ever suffer a loss. Never. Why? Because when I came into this world, I was naked. I had zero. So whatever I have today is more than what I had the day I was born. That's it. That's my motivation. I tell myself, Oh Allah, the clothes I have, I did not have when I was born. So Ya Allah, I can never be below zero. Subhanallah. He says, I was clothed when I came onto earth. I was given things. Imagine handouts, whether it was your folks or someone else is besides the point. Someone was kind to you. And that's why you had clothing. But when you came onto the earth, you had zero. And when you are going to leave, you will still have zero with you besides your deeds, obviously. And I was very impressed by this. I looked at him and I digested what he said. And I thought about it for a long time. And here I am sharing it with you. My brothers and sisters, we have been blessed by Allah in a billion and one ways. 
And indeed, if you were to try to count the gifts of Allah, you would never be able to count all of them. For indeed, man is not only oppressive, but he is ungrateful, filled with ingratitude. That's what Allah is saying. But we are mu'mineen, we are different. We should be filled with gratitude. Part of gratitude is to understand the plan of Allah. Many of us do not understand the plan of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in the Quran. The Quran is revealed and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there in order to teach us why we are here and what is expected from us while we are here. So subhanallah, Allah says in the Quran, وَاللَّهُ فَضَّلَ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ فِي الرِّزْقَ Indeed, in sustenance, Allah has raised some of you above others. There is a reason. The reason is to test you. What are you going to do? I've given you. And your neighbor? I haven't given him as much as I've given you. What are you going to do? That's all. When you die, there are two things. What you earn is one and what you spent is another. Subhanallah. You're going to be asked about both. And you know what will happen in the case of a lot of us? We've earned way beyond what we were able to spend. Subhanallah. So Allah says, we gave it to you. You know, in another verse, Allah speaks of Banu Israel and the tests that came to Banu Israel. And then he says, It was in order for him to see, what do you do? What's your deeds? I've tested you to see what are you going to do. I've given you to see what are you going to do. So what happens? We've been given. We've been blessed. Every one of us is blessed in our own unique way. Have you identified that blessing? Some have been blessed in more than one way. The blessing I have, you may not have. But you have a blessing that I may not have. It does overlap at times, mashallah. But what do I do with it? If I am the top educator in the country, what have I done with it? Have I only made it a means of income for me to live on earth? If that's the case, I've forgotten about the hereafter. I've taken it out of the equation. I've really misfired. I haven't understood. Allah's blessed me with the intellect. That intellect is from Allah. And I happen to be the best educator or teacher of a specific subject. Have I ever reached out to people without wanting monetary reward and said, I'm going to spend some time teaching those who can't really afford to get to me. And I'm going to spend a few moments volunteering. They don't always want your money. Perhaps they might be able to benefit from your expertise way beyond what your money would have done. And I always tell people that I learn from the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُبْطِلُوا صَدَقَاتِكُمْ لَا تُبْطِلُوا صَدَقَاتِكُمْ بِالْمَنِّ وَالْأَذَى O you who believe, do not nullify your charities through bragging about it and harming those whom you've been charitable to. You know what that means? That means I must be the most humble person when I'm giving. Considering myself fortunate to have been given the ability to give whatever I'm giving. Considering myself fortunate to have been witnessing a need and it was made clear to me that there is a need. Do you know it's my duty to give? And it's my duty to search and to look for who I should give it to. I don't need to sit in my business, my shop, my school, wherever else at home and wait for people to come and beg from me. No, your duty as a Muslim is to go out and hunt and look where is the cause? Where can I give? Where can I help? Where can I volunteer? Where can I donate? Where can I assist? Where can I be a help, a helping hand? Where can I fit in? Some might not have much, but trust me, you can make dua. You can pray. And when you pray, you need to thank Allah that He's given you a heart because that's the beginning. 
You will never pray for people suffering if you don't have a heart. Whenever I've seen, and I'm sure 100% of us, whenever we've seen what's going on across the globe, we bleed. Look at what's happening in Syria. Up to this day, we're not happy. It's not like we're excited about it. We're so upset. We are desperate. We are frustrated. So what do you do? The first step is to call out to Allah. That's the first step. It's the most powerful step. It's not the only step because then Allah's given each one of us a different capacity to do different things. And all those things that we choose to do should be constructive and not destructive. You need to remember that. The same applies what's going on in Rohingya right now. None of us could say that we're not bleeding. We're frustrated. We want to see a solution. Even the non-Muslims want to see a solution. They don't want to see the ethnic cleansing that is being perpetrated there. It is frustrating. It is sad. Not every one of us can go there. But guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a chance to get up for tahajjud. But shaitan comes to us and makes us point fingers. What is he doing? He's a famous guy. He's doing nothing. By saying that, what have you done? He's a, he's a this guy. He's done nothing. What have you done? You're passing the buck. Stop it. Don't pass the buck. You might want to encourage people. You might want to raise awareness. You might want to say something. But it starts with you. If you were really concerned, get up for salat al tahajjud. Allah says that through your difficulty, He draws you closer to Him. You know when you have a massive problem, diagnosed cancer, may Allah grant cure to all those who are struggling and suffering with any form of disease, be it cancer, be it HIV, be it anything else, whether it is terminal or not, may Allah grant you cure. Say Amen. When, when you are diagnosed with a disease, people react differently. A mu'min becomes closer to Allah. It's a gift of Allah. And I can explain quickly why it's a gift. But before that, I want to tell you, a person who doesn't have belief, distances himself from Allah. A person whose iman is dilly-dallying, starts questioning Allah, becomes angry with Allah. Why me? Why is this happening? What are you doing, Allah? I'm calling out to you. I'm asking you. You're not doing anything for me. What are you doing? My child is struggling and suffering. Allah, I've called out to you for the last three years. What's the problem? Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. Allah forbid. Never let that happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah idha ahabb abdan ibtalahu. When Allah tests a worshiper, when Allah loves a worshiper, He tests him. So if you have a difficulty, guess what it will do to you? You did not read, used to read salah. You did not used to do things according to what Allah wanted. But now when Allah's tapping you, hey, hey, come over. What do you do? You took a bit of time. Allah says, hang on. Now you've got a cough. You're still taking a bit of time. Coffee is nothing. I'll get the cough mixture. I don't need to read salah for that. Astaghfirullah. But sometimes subconsciously, that's our attitude. Then Allah says, okay, we give you something bigger. If that's going to bring you. Because I love you. I need you to come to me. So then you get something bigger. And what happens? You still go to the doctor and you're still not reading your salah. You're still not fulfilling your duty unto Allah and unto the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. That's an important point. It's not just a duty unto Allah. Part of your duty unto Allah is your duty unto the creatures of the same maker. He made them be they Muslim, non-Muslim, white, black, tall, short, in Africa or anywhere else in the world. They are the creatures of the same maker who made you. You are no better than them in creation. They are the creatures of the same Allah. You have a duty unto them because He made them for a purpose. That's what it is. So subhanAllah, When you are turning towards Allah because of your difficulty and your hardship and because of your sickness, it's a sign that you've really been gifted by Allah. And Allah keeps you that way. So now you start praying because now you start thinking to yourself, you know what, I need to cry. And you get people praying for you. And now you become a softer person. You start becoming conscious of others with similar problems. You start joining little groups of people who have issues. You start calling out to Allah and you start reaching out to people. And you, that makes you feel better. It makes you become a softer person. And that's what a religious person is all about. You want to know who is the closest to Allah? He is the person who has the most beautiful character. Your closeness to Allah is very closely reflected in your character. Those who are harsh and hard-hearted, they cannot be close to Allah. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ 
أنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لا فضوا من حولك It is by the mercy of Allah that you have become lenient towards those around you. Had you been hard hearted or harsh, they would have dispersed. They wouldn't even want to be in your company. But when someone is very polite, when someone is very concerned about the goodness reaching you, you want to be in their company. You, you are impressed. You feel so much at home. You feel like you know them. You feel so close because you're a human. You have feelings. You have a heart. You have a mind just like theirs. And they are appealing to you because they are speaking the language of humanity as a believer. So subhanallah, Allah draws you close through your difficulty. I mentioned the two points. The one is some people through their difficulty, they get closer to Allah. Those whose Iman is weak, their belief is weak. They question Allah. But sometimes Allah keeps you in your hardship. Do you know why? He knows if I were to take this away, this person might just go back. Well, Allah knows for certain we don't know. So he says, I love the way you're worshipping me. You're crying to me. You're softened. You get up every morning. You're reaching out to others. You speak so politely. Finally, with your daughter. Sorry to give that example. But anyway. <laughs> you speak so politely with those around you. Finally, subhanallah. And you're such a lovely person. Because of your difficulty. Allah says, can't we keep you like this for a little longer? And you want it today. Now. Well, I want to give you good news. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Allah remains in the assistance of the worshipper. For as long as that worshipper remains in the assistance of another. If you want help, the first thing to do, start helping others. You'll get the help. That's what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says. And like I said earlier, it's our duty to go out and hunt. You know, I read the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhuma. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen, one of the things he says about zakah, he said you should teach the people one, two, three, and then he said, فَأَعْلِمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ فَتُرَدُّ فِي فُقَرَائِهِمْ Let them know. Let them know that Allah has made incumbent or compulsory upon them that they give a charity. It shall be taken from the rich and distributed into the poor. Subhanallah. That is why Allah gave you more. Allah did not give you more so that you can amass it to the degree that you have forgotten to build your hereafter. Allah gave it to you so that you can give others. وَآتُوهُمْ مِمَّا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي آتَاكُمْ In Surah An-Nur, Allah says, Give them from the wealth of Allah that He made you a custodian of. Do you know what that means? It's not yours. مَا لِلَّهِ The wealth belongs to Allah, not to you. You're a custodian of it. When you came onto the earth, like I started off by saying you had zero. When you shall leave, you shall leave with zero. What you did in the center, in the middle, your transactions and the way you transacted, that is what will help you in your grave and in your hereafter. So build, build your palace in the hereafter. It is everlasting way beyond your imagination. And this is why my brothers, my sisters today, we are seated here. 30 years of Africa Muslims agency. Hafid Imran made mention of my father. I was going to say that anyway. That I recall your dad, may Allah give him Jannatul Firdaus. And for your information, that's the reason why the moment I received a call, I have a soft spot for Africa Muslims agency. I told him, brother, I will be there. He told me, we will cover your costs, we will this. I said, listen, brother, I'm not interested in covering any costs. I will be insulted if you gave me anything. I'm coming for the sake of Allah. And I'm coming because I believe it's good work. And I'm coming because I'm impressed by what has been achieved. A little seed that was sown. And don't you dare think that, oh, this is money from the Gulf states. No way. If you think that it's the devil making you run away because of some bad deed you've done from giving. 
It is money from here that's distributed across the globe. I promise you, the South African example shines across the globe. It's one country that Allah has blessed in, an, in a continent that really needs a lot of help. So thank Allah. Keep on giving. When you give, Allah will give you more. I promise you. min sadaqa. The Prophet ﷺ says, nobody has ever become bankrupt because of giving. Charitable. Subhanallah. That's a guarantee from your messenger. If ever you fear poverty, give charity. It will come back to you. Multiply. I promise you. It's in the Quran. If ever you fear poverty, give a charity. It doesn't have to be all your money like Abu Bakr, as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Those were the superheroes. We could not compete with them. But what it definitely is, small portion, one rand, five rands. And this is why when you read Surah al duha if you were to read it with its meaning, your life will change. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by the choice of Allah, divine choice, he was an orphan. Why? Isn't that consolation to all the orphans across the globe that the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, the top of the top was actually an orphan? There's hope for you more than there is for me who had both parents. Wow. Wow. Allah has chosen you, my beloved orphan, child. Allah has chosen you way above me. Your head start is a few kilometers in front of me. Because the most beloved, already there was a quality from birth that you share, that I don't have. That's why Allah says, وَأَمَّ الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقَهَرُ As for the orphan, don't be hard on him. Don't be harsh. Don't rebuke. Don't abuse an orphan. Be kind. Subhanallah. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, speaks about an orphan. He says, Ana wa fil jannah. Myself and the one who takes care of an orphan shall be in paradise like these two fingers. And he joined the two fingers that I'm showing you right now, the first and the second. Why? Those are in need. People say, innocent children, yes. But they're in that condition because it's a test for you who are around. What will you do solely for the sake of Allah? Will you help? There is a widow. The hadith says those who spend their day or those who assist widows and orphans for the sake of Allah are equivalent in reward to the one who stood in prayer all night, every night and the one who fasts every day on condition that you do it for the sake of Allah. Today, she's a pretty lady. Let's help. Subhanallah. You know what I'm talking about. It's facts. But she's old. You know, she might not be that attractive. Subhanallah. What hypocrisy is this? Is that what we've become? Is that how low we've become? I'd like to hope it's not the case. You help for the sake of Allah and Allah alone. Allah alone. And remember, if you don't help, it's quite simple. It's going to come from someone else. And it's been proven. Read the verse of the Quran. If you turn away, Allah says, we will replace you with those who won't be like you. They won't be like you. They'll be better. So don't think the work of Allah and don't think reaching out to the poor across the globe is connected to you alone. No, if you are on it, it's a favor of Allah that he convinced you, he put it in your heart to give. But if you are miserly, trust me, the work will continue even beyond your imagination with others. It will continue. I remember there was a brother who told someone at one of the organizations that, you know what, after pledging so much, he says, I'm not giving because he had a little misunderstanding. As he walked out of the office, there was a brother sitting outside. He walked in, he put down a figure, twice the pledge of the brother who just walked out. Wow. I witnessed this with my own eyes and I was just looking. And I said, Ya ilaha al-alamin. Oh Allah, you have indeed spoken the truth. Replace with someone else. This man walked out. Another thing, my brothers, my sisters, this evening I said it elsewhere and I'm repeating it. A pledge is as good as a bird in the sky. Remember that. A pledge is as good as a bird in the sky. 
When you catch the bird and put it on the table, you have now fulfilled your pledge. Otherwise, I know of many who pledge huge amounts. They never put their money where their mouth is. Never. I hope we're not like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We can pledge. The organizations come and showcase for us while we're on our beds through the month of Ramadan and at other times and we're sitting flicking and we're hearing, you know, these people are dying in Niger and this is what's happening and so on. You know, my brother, my sister, it's your duty to feel the pain of all of those. Where is the hadith? Al-mu'minuna kal jasad al-wahid idha ishtaka minhu udu tada'a lahu sa'iru al-jasad bisahri wal humma. The mu'minun are like one body. If a single part of it is struggling, suffering in pain, the whole body shall struggle with sleeplessness, insomnia, pain, etc. And perhaps fever. What was happening and what is still happening across the globe, we all want to help. Well, I can tell you, I started off by saying, make dua after that. Reach into your pockets. And you know what? You will not all be able to go there physically. I've been to some places, not all. And what could I have done? Very little. Had it not been for a lot of people behind me having sent me with a reputable organization to say, you know what? We would like to assist. Can you take this and make sure it gets to the recipient? And if they're honest, subhanallah, you will feel the blessings in your own selves and your children and your loved ones and your community. So don't think for a moment that, you know what, what are they doing? No, what am I doing? What did I do? How much do I have? What can I give? Subhanallah. I was saying, your father, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jannatul Firdaus. I've met him many times. I met Dr. Abdul Rahman as many times. And they've been with Sheikh Saad Talib to my house, sitting so many times. I, you know, sometimes together and separately as well. What was the discussion all about? I was a kid. I was a child. Remember, 30 years ago, I must have been, what, 15? Gave my age away. I was stressed. <laughs> but at the same time, subhanallah, I recall, and the discussion was all about going. I used to go out with them to rural areas. I used to go out, and we used to see what was happening. We used to distribute. And you know what? That continued all along. So when I see the children of the same man doing the same work with the same dedication, if not now that it's three people, perhaps a little bit more, but the barakah of that generation was something else. Trust me, I always say this is a sign of acceptance from Allah. I know with us, we've taken from my dad. In my family, subhanallah. And I start thinking to myself, when people continue the effort that was good of their fathers, it's a sign that Allah has accepted it. I see amongst us some seated here, and I know their fathers. Some of them are late, and their mothers in some instances. And I promise you the brilliant work they were doing is continued. I want to cry when I think of what's happening. But there are others who keep pointing fingers, and their job is only... To look for faults rather than to help, to assist. I'm doing something wrong. Please come to me and guide me, tell me, correct me. I'm a human. I'm your child. I'm your brother. Come and tell me, listen, son, listen, my brother. I think this wasn't right. How you said it, what you said, what you did. I will improve myself. I promise you, you don't have to go out and attack in a way that subhanallah, you're destroying the entire ummah. And this is what's going on today. We don't do the good work and we don't want others to do the good work. Leave him alone. My father's taught me that the best of people are those who don't harm you. Subhanallah. I don't need your help anymore. That's what I understood from what he said. My father has a policy. He says, never ever go out for a collection. I said, but why not? We're doing work worth millions of dollars. He says, the work is open for everyone to see. If Allah puts it in their hearts, the money came from Allah. If you scrounged it out of the people, perhaps their dirty money might come and contaminate the work and we will be divided and split in no time. That policy is not everybody's policy. It's a very high level. It's a very high level. That's the reason why you might have known me for so many years. You actually don't know what I do in real life. Maybe some might know. You don't know what I do in real life. You just know me for a man standing in front, speaking and lecturing. That's it. And perhaps tweeting now and again. May Allah bless you all and bless us. But here we have a favor of Allah. 
People are coming to you to show you how many masjids. And it's a fact. It's not, it sounds so huge. But you know what? It's the barakah that Allah has bestowed upon some. And I'm not saying it's the only organization. But I am saying there's a lot of good work happening. Let's try and support it through dua, through reaching out into our pockets. Put in a little bit. Imagine there's a masjid being built or let's say right now people are gone to Rohingya in order to try and help the people and you gave a thousand rands. When you see the people, wallahi, wallahi, when you see pictures of how the, the uh, aid is being distributed, won't it bring a coolness to your heart to think, hey, my thousand is there, alhamdulillah. You know, there's a hadith which says, Man lillahi masjidan banallahu lahu baytan fil jannah. Whoever builds for Allah, this place of worship, Allah builds for them a house in paradise. We might not be able to afford the large amounts that are required. But trust me, the mercy of Allah is even if you've donated a single brick by the will of Allah, He's not just going to say, right, here's your brick. Now that's it in the akhirah. He's going to give you the whole house, even through that brick by His mercy. So be charitable. Reach out. Make dua for those who are charitable. And guess what? If you don't have much, create an awareness by speaking to your friends, your family members, those who are wealthy, your acquaintances in a nice way. Just create an awareness. Say, you know, this is a really good cause. Mashallah. You know, it might strike them to say, let me give something. And if they do, you get a full reward. The one who showed others towards goodness gets the full reward of all of that goodness. Amazing. Amazing. So I can't afford it, but I'm talking to people who can in such a lovely way that I've convinced 20 guys to give. They gave 2 million rands. I'm sitting millionaire. But please, please don't let yourself become arrogant because of that. When you give, if you want to know, I'm going to say a few things today that you will take home, inshallah. When you give, you've got to remember the test is humility thereafter. The best charity is that when you've given, you don't want to score or clock mileage out of that giving. No. Yes, someone might respect you. They might invite you. They might call you. You're a donor. They're happy. They want to show you the activities and so on. But when you start requesting your perks, you're getting paid for what you've given in that way. Then the reward of it, you're cutting it because you're getting something. The best thing, give and don't expect anything besides what Allah will shall bless you with. Listen to this verse of Surah Al-Dahr. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا The true believers, those who give genuinely for the sake of Allah, do you know what they say? We have fed you for the sake of Allah. We don't even want from you a recompense, nor do we want you to say thank you. I don't even want you to say thank you. Shukuran. I don't want shukr from you. Thanks. I want it's Allah. My reward is with Allah. It's okay. What I've done for you is actually for Allah. But because Allah made a need come in front of my eyes, it was my duty to do something about it. I did something and I carried on. That's why the end of Surah Al Duha, Allah says, Wa ammasa fala tanhar. As for the one who is asking, don't rebuke him. You know the beggars you see, no matter where they are, those who come to you in order to ask, no matter who they are, don't rebuke them, don't insult them, don't belittle them. That's a verse of the Quran. There's someone begging on Krumbum here down the road. Every year I come, I see the same guy. If I can't give him at least, Alaikum Assalam, how are you, my brother? Or maybe don't say anything. Some people say, no, you guys are giving, you're going to support these guys, you, 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 you're going to create a huge syndicate, whatever. Hang on, hang on, hang on, relax. Either you give or you don't give. The choice is definitely yours. Do it with respect. That's all. Don't harm the man. Like I said earlier, it is better to be a person who doesn't give and doesn't harm than to be someone who gives and harms. I give and you've got to hear for the rest of your life. You know, I'm a person, I'm going to let you in on something personal. To accept a gift from people is very, very difficult. Even if that gift is worth 10,000 rands. I try my best to avoid it. The reason is, I know the payment of it shall be 50,000 rands. I'd rather keep your gift. We maintain that respect and I maintain my freedom. 
Subhanallah. I'm giving you something about myself. Why did I learn that? It might help me. Yes, you wanted to give me a mobile phone. Thank you. I appreciate your gesture. But guess what? I'm not going to take it. The reason is, I love you so much. I don't want it to come between you and I. I don't. And I know I'm going to have to pay for it. Because tomorrow you phone me 12 at night. Hey, I need this. I need that. I feel obliged. I'm now a hypocrite. I'm not doing it because I want to. I'm doing it because, hey, the guy gave me a phone, man. You see what I'm saying? It's tough. Not everyone thinks like that. I'm one who prefers to say, listen, maintain your independence and you can make your decisions. The point I'm raising is, when you give someone something, ensure that it's respectful. If I gave him, it's for the sake of Allah. If I didn't, I maintain that respect and I walked away. So this is Allah. Allah's plan, Allah's plan is that he will give you more than what you need in order to see what you do with the extra. Excess. A lot of the times we have extra, we forget about building the castle of the Akhirah while we're building our palace here. And I always tell the brothers, mashallah, you know, who work really hard. And mashallah, when you get to the age of 45, 50, 60, you, you, you finally made a little bit of money. Well, nowadays for our daughters, we're looking for the wealthiest of the wealthy. They must already have a house and a Porsche and a Ferrari as well as a Porsche. Because a Ferrari apparently is supposed to be better than a Porsche. Subhanallah. But we don't realize when we married, when our fathers married, they didn't even have a house. They didn't even own a car in a lot of cases. And they worked for 30, 40 years. And we were so happy. We used to go to school and come back not knowing it's a rented property. Not knowing the guy's working so hard and he's sweating and he's making us. But for our daughters, we're looking for those who are already the kings, you know, wealthy. Otherwise, so what happens? We've compromised the quality of individual because we're looking only at wealth. That's what it is. Why am I saying this? Because the average human around, in fact, do you know the majority of the people on earth can never own a home and they will not own a house. If you have a house that belongs to you and you're sleeping in it, you're already top 30% of the globe. Did you ever know that? Check the statistics tonight. There's a sheikh that you can rely on for those type of statistics known as sheikh Google. Yeah. And to be honest, you've worked so hard and now you're 50 years old, 55, 60, you're building your house. Finally, finally, mashallah. What's happening? It's going to take you two years to build. Minimum, two years to build. If you're in Zimbabwe, you can add a zero to that because we're famous to do that anyway. But it's going to take you a while. When you've built it, how old are you? 55. How many years do you have to live? If you're lucky, 20. 75, right? That's a brilliant age. If you're beyond 75, you're beyond average. Beyond 70 is beyond average, according to the hadith. 65 is about average. SubhanAllah, may Allah grant us good health. I see people are looking at me so worried. It's okay, don't worry, relax. May Allah give you long life. May Allah give you health and happiness and contentment. But you're going to live in this house for 20 years. And after that, where are, you, where are you going to go? For another, already people have passed away for longer than they were alive. Have you ever thought of what that means? People have passed away for longer than they were alive. Those who died a thousand years ago, they lived for 60, 70 years. Those who died 200 years ago, they lived for 60, 70 years if they were lucky. So they've been dead for longer than they were alive. But they prepared for those 20 years in a way that they forgot about preparation for the rest. Allah says, if you want to prepare for the rest, reach out to others. We'll do the rest for you. Your link with Allah, absolutely important, prime. It's number one. Don't compromise that. But tonight, we're talking about charity. So I'm telling you, you want to build your akhirah, you want to build your hereafter, you want to build your paradise, learn to give and give so much that subhanallah, Allah keeps giving you. I remember once I was sitting and discussing this matter and one of the ulama said something that I'll never forget. He says, when you pledge a monthly amount to a certain good cause, say for example to orphans, Right? I pledge a thousand rands every month or 500 rands or a hundred rands every month for this orphanage, for example. It's sustenance written for them, not for you. But Allah gave them through you. So Allah has to give you before it gets to them. So you will always have. You following what we're saying? 
Yeah, I pledged it and it's going to continue. A, a day might come when you're struggling a little bit. How am I going to give this? Give it. Allah will give it to you. But please understand, you need to work for it. And Allah gives you the barakah because you worked for it in the name of Allah. You don't just sit back and say, right guys, did you hear what the mufti said the other day? Given you shall receive. I gave 70,000. Now I'm sitting at home looking at the ceiling, hoping... <laughs> The tornado might come and wash your whole ceiling off. May Allah not do that to us. Could happen. You say, hey, that's the angel opening up here. No way. Something grossly has gone wrong. You're lazy. You're sitting back. Go and work. If you work, Allah will give you blessing. Can I tell you? This is by far probably the most powerful statement you're going to hear this evening. Zakat is the two and a half percent in most cases that you have to give of your savings and there is a way of calculating what you need to look at and after the year you need to give two and a half percent for who for allah it means that belongs to who to you or to allah to allah the wealth was allah's and he gave you 97.5 and he told you hang on two and a half is my change where is my change you need to give it to allah it was never yours if you left it in your system he's going to take it from you by hook or crook through sickness through illness through accident through disease through fires through anything the money is going to go from you it was never yours he's going to take it if you gave it with your heart allah says it will cleanse you خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ Take from them that charity, that zakah, which will clean them, it will cleanse them. It's our wealth. We want that back. We gave you a hundred and you know we told you in advance. Hey, we're waiting for the change. Someone comes to your store, they buy worth 97.50. They give you a hundred dollar bill and you say, thanks. What? I'm waiting. But the amount is negligible. Negligible or not, it's my change. You're going to be in trouble if you don't give it to me. Okay? Same happens with Allah. In fact, walillahi mathalul a'la. The example of Allah is far higher than that. This is why they say when we're struck with calamity and lots of money is spent or gone, first question you ask yourself have I paid my zakat properly? I'm sorry to say it is a question you have to ask yourself. You may have. If you have, you've ticked that off. It's now something else. Sometimes it's just a test from Allah. A lot of the times if you're patient, Allah will grant you much more. It's just a test. But it's a question you need to ask. Like when you're not well, you go for a blood test to check all your markers. Not because you definitely have a certain disease, but to tick it off, to make sure it's not that. So it's a question you need to ask yourself. Subhanallah. If you want to know the type of person you are, if you want to know more about yourself, your character, because the hadith says the best from among you are those with the best character. That's a hadith. The best from among you are those with the best character. So if you would like to know, if you would like to know where do I fit in, there is a test, litmus test. You can test yourself. Ask yourself one question. The answer of it, will tell you who you actually are. What's the question? The person whom the world considers the lowest, whom the world considers most insignificant, whom the world considers almost irrelevant, how do you treat that person will determine who you are. Finished. There's no other way. Did you hear what I said? You see a man cleaning you see a man guarding the cars. You see someone coming to serve you on a table. Do you acknowledge they're human? Do you acknowledge they probably have families? Do you know what made them do this? Do you realize it could have been you? Do you greet them? Do you actually smile at them? Does it, does it bring you inner peace when you see them smile back and acknowledge you? Hi, madam, how are you? How's your evening? And carry on. For the sake of Allah, just because I wanted them to feel important then you are definitely very high in character and conduct. Don't ever forget what I said tonight. All those whom the world considers insignificant, you should never consider them insignificant. It's your test. Allah put them in front of you for a reason to test. What did you do? So you can convert it into a huge act of worship by being kind. By re a lot of the people don't want your money. They need you to just be kind. Be okay. You know, that's it.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can reach out to one another. Subhanallah. If you want to know how generous you are, how generous you are, then there is a test. What is the test? What do you give over and above zakah? That's when you will know how generous you are. Zakah does not determine generosity. You're just fulfilling an obligation. That's it. Above zakah, what do you give? Then you're a generous person. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. I have so much to say. I've spoken for 45 minutes. And I think that was way beyond my own time that I had set myself half an hour. But subhanallah, it's amazing. It's a lovely evening. It's so beautiful here. And I really pray for everyone who's here to be able to carry this message throughout the globe. Those who are listening perhaps on the television, those who may listen to this a little bit later, may Allah make this a means of motivation for all of us, means of maghfirah for the late uh, Muhammad Farid Chunara and all those who have uh, set up this, the late uh, Dr. Asmaid, Abdurrahman Asmaid also, whose brainchild it was. And I'm sure there are so many of us doing so much of good work. Whatever you're doing, may Allah accept it from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you from those whose work can actually be increased. And let's learn to cooperate with one another. Let's learn to cooperate with one another. That's my last message. We must cooperate with one another because at the moment, the ummah is struggling due, the ummah is struggling due to us bickering and pointing fingers and becoming disunited over small matters. I don't need to think like you or believe exactly what you believe, etc, etc. But I need to respect you. If I respect you, I can be united with you with my difference. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant acceptance to this work. And ultimately, may Allah grant us all Jannatul Firdaus and paradise. Say Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.